34 minutes after the hour, America. Tomorrow at the Nixon Library in Yorba Linda, California at 1030, a gathering of prisoners of war from Vietnam to, uh, to commemorate the 40th anniversary of their homecoming will occur at 1030 in the morning. The uh, former POWs were welcomed at the uh, uh, Nixon Library yesterday and earlier this week. And joining me now is Colonel Lee Ellis, of course. Colonel Ellis is the author of Leading with Honor. He's been a leadership consultant, but he spent five years in the Hanoi Hilton after flying more than 50 combat missions over Vietnam. Colonel Ellis, welcome. Great honor to talk to you. How was yesterday's reception at the Nixon Library? It was fantastic, Hugh. It's good to talk to you again. It was a beautiful day. and so great to be with friends and they had a great ceremony and a wonderful uh, barbecue afterwards. It was just a great day and so many citizens lined the streets to wave at us. We just felt so honored. Well, it's been 40 years ago tonight that you went into the White House and, and who accompanied you? Did you have family with you on the uh, night of the White House dinner 40 years sure, ago? Yeah, I sure did. Uh, I was single back, you know, when I was shot down and so when I came home, so I took my mother, and uh, that was a fabulous experience for her and a great memory for me. They had a, a, a star celebrity at most every table, and we had Sammy Davis Jr., and that was a great evening. My mom and Sammy Davis Jr. were cracking cracking everybody up, and it was just a great evening. So th- this fellowship, which is unique, how many POWs of the Vietnam era are with us still, Colonel? About 400 out of about 525. So well, that's remarkable. About 20%. And, and of those uh, 400, how many gathered at the library this week? About 200 are here. A lot of them are just so old they can't travel, and some just uh, don't, stay, don't stay engaged in these kind of things. But we have a great turnout, and a lot of them brought uh, family, uh, kids and grandkids. Well, I'm glad that, that the library organized this, and I'll bet you not many people realize this Memorial Day weekend marks the 40th anniversary of the return of the POW. So uh, uh, give people a, a quick thumbnail, if you will, Colonel, of the conditions of your imprisonment when you were shot down in the years that you were in uh, Vietnam. Sure. Well, it took me two weeks to get to Hanoi, and that was an exciting time because the local population tried to kill me three times, and fortunately the militia had strict orders to bring the PO, the pilots especially, to bring the skin alive that was captured over the north. And I was bombed in straits three times by American air power. Of course, they didn't know I was there on the ground, but I uh, was able to get in bomb shelters and whatever. But once I got to the Hanoi Hilton, I went in a cell that was six and a half by seven feet, not very big, uh, with three other guys. Wow. Uh, and we were there for nine months. We were fed twice a day. Uh, under a lot of pressure, hungry, cold in the winter, hot in the summer, uh, threats of, of uh, being tried for war criminals, tortured twice during that time period for uh, basic, just basic stuff, more or less just to kind of break us. Uh, then they started trying to get propaganda out of us, and that came and went from time to time. So it was always a battle for the first three, three and a half years we were there. And then the treatment, uh, thanks to the American people who really put pressure on them about our treatment, they responded when Ho Chi Minh died, and the treatment got better, and we came home in pretty good shape, uh, all, all things considered. Now, it's been 40 years, Colonel Ellis, and mm-hmm. leading with honor, and, and a number of your colleagues, John McCain, of course, the highest profile of them, remain right. highly esteemed and recognized by the American people. But, uh, you know, it's a new generation. I was in uh, high school when you guys came home, so I can remember right. it pretty well. But what about the younger Americans? Do they really understand the epic uh, suffering and hardship in, endured by our POWs in that war? I don't think they know unless they've been involved with some, you know, someone who's uh, speaking about it or they've read about it, but they're very interested in it. And um, I know I've had at least four or five requests already in the last six months from students who want, who are actually having to do a report and they have to interview a Vietnam veteran and friends of mine have directed them to me. So evidently there is some movement to make the young people more aware of the Vietnam War. So that's, uh, I think it's a good thing. And how close is the the fellowship? How often are you in touch with one of your colleagues from the Hanoi Hilton? Some of them uh, once every couple of weeks through email, uh, just for stuff that's going on with health and, you know, friendship and all that and travel. Uh, Some of them I see once or twice a year at different events. And then uh, some of them I'll see only at reunions about every three years. So it varies, but when we get together... Yeah, you know, as military guys, and especially as POWs who have this close bond, 
Uh, we just pick up where we left off, and it, it is a real brotherhood. Well, Colonel Ellis, uh, thank you again for your service on this Memorial Day weekend. The book is Leading with Honor, and tomorrow morning, uh, America, if you go anywhere in Southern California, you can meet five of the heroes of that area who are, uh, and there'll be other ones at the Nixon Library as well. It gets underway at 1030 in the morning, uh, including Commander Everett Alvarez, and Lieutenant Colonel Tom Hatton, Captain Mike McGrath, Captain Paul Galanti. It just is going to be an amazing day at the Nixon Library as we honor uh, the men who came home 40 years ago this week.